This video is sponsored by Netflix. That's right, you guys. This video is actually sponsored by none other than Netflix themselves. How cool is that? Or should I say, how strange? <laughs> anyway, Netflix reached out to me on my Instagram account a few weeks ago and asked me to be part of a collaboration to celebrate the new release of season three of Stranger Things on Netflix. And my contribution to this collaboration is this piece of Nancy and Barbara from season one of Stranger Things. And in just a minute, I'm going to walk you through the speed paint and talk about it. But before I do that, I would like to actually invite all of you, especially if you're in the area of Copenhagen, on August 22nd to come to the celebration exhibit for Stranger Things. I will be there. There will be lots of amazing fan art. I will bring 10 very limited and never to be reprinted again exclusive prints of the piece I just showed you and give them away to the first 10 of you guys that show up and even if I don't have any prints left just come and say hi and hang and talk to me look at the fan art with me and just be strange with me. <laughs> so that's August 22nd here in Copenhagen. If you can't make it to that one there's actually also an exhibit on August 15th in Stockholm. Unfortunately, I can't be at the exhibit in Stockholm, but I will be at the one here in Copenhagen. So I hope I will see you guys there. And now let's just move on to speed paint process of this. Uh, by the way, there will be a few spoilers from season one of Stranger Things in the following minutes, not season 2 or season 3, from season 1. So why did I choose to draw something from the first season? Well, I do love the new seasons, but nothing hit me quite as hard as the first one. And I was going to draw some of the characters who doesn't get as much attention as the main cast. I remember feeling really sad about the character death of Barbara, and I was very invested in Nancy's determination to find her friend. And besides that, I always had some kind of unexplained love towards how American high schools are portrayed in films and movies that I saw as a teenager, because it's very different from high schools that we have here in Denmark. So I decided to draw Nancy and Barbara as they were while in high school and before all of these tragic events started happening all around them. Although I couldn't resist to put the demogorgon in the reflection on the floor, but you'll see that by the end of this video. I drew most of this drawing on my iPad in Procreate, which is the reason that the time lapse look a little different from usual, but I'm going to shift over to Photoshop later on. For sketching and lining, I'm using a brush very similar to my main brush in Photoshop. I'll post a few of its specs on the screen now so that you can see. For the background, I used a perspective grid guide that you can turn on and off in Procreate. It makes it much easier to draw backgrounds that actually look realistic next to your characters. I actually thought that the grid would appear on the video though, so I'm showing it on a second video here so you can get a sense of how it's actually working. Initially I wanted to include the Stranger Things logo as well, but it worked out much better on the sketch than on the final version, so I actually ended up taking it out completely. Sometimes you just don't know if certain things will work in a drawing before you try to implement them, and that was just the case here. Right now my go-to place for lining is actually my iPad. The Apple Pencil has such an accurate precision because of the zero parallax. So I just prefer to do my line out here. Even sketches that I start in Photoshop might even go through my iPad to get cleaned up a little. Lining or cleaning up sketches are actually some of my favorite parts of a drawing or favorite stages or steps. I always had a pretty steady hand which allowed me to create very continuous lines when inking and when the underlying sketch is as clean as this one, I don't even have to think much. I just have to draw, and that's nice. <laughs> My favorite part within the drawing is still drawing hair. I love creating characters with 
hair. <laughs> so I'm glad that Nancy and Barb have hair. <laughs> I think I will just always have a soft spot for that part. I can't even say what it is. It just, I just like it. I love it. So after lining, I move on to the flat colors or color blocking as I also sometimes call it. A little tip for when you're doing flat colors or just colors in general, depending on how your printing process is, is to make the background you have around 50% white and 50% black. That means just somewhere in between. You can even make it gray, but you can also put a color on it if you like, but the relationship between the bright and the dark should be around 50% in order for this to work. First of all, it helps you to see the colors you pick more accurately next to each other. For instance, if the background is too white, the skin color looks way darker compared to the background. If the background is too dark, the skin might look too bright. So by setting the background to approximately 50% dark, 50% bright, you get a more realistic interpretation of the colors and the brightness of the colors that you chose. Another reason to do this is to save battery and or reduce heat on the screen tablet or your monitor. My iPad and XP Pen tablet get pretty hot when I work on them for long periods of time. And by minimizing the amount of white pixels, you can actually save both battery and reduce the heat. For shading in Procreate, I mainly use four brushes. The standard hard airbrush, the standard soft airbrush, my usual little favorite that I showed you before, and to blend them together I used this one that has a lot of texture in it and I just applied it to the blending option. I must admit that I haven't really been impressed by Procreate's blending abilities because I haven't found a blending brush that works as well as the one I have in Photoshop, so sometimes I need to do a little extra blending back in Photoshop once I'm done in Procreate. So it's a lot of back and forth by now, as you can imagine. I knew from the beginning that I wanted to blur out the background once I was done with it. If I didn't plan to blur out the background, I would have spent a lot more time on the details to avoid it looking, well, just too unrealistic compared to the shading and rendering of Nancy and Barbara. After rendering the two characters, I took the drawing back into Photoshop to finish the background for two reasons. The obvious reason was that I was running out of layers in Procreate. There's actually a limit to how many layers that you can create depending on the document size. And mine, boy, was big. Second reason is that I wanted to use a lot of masks and blending modes to create the background and in my experience Photoshop just usually handles that a lot better than Procreate. To create the reflective floor, I copied the walls and the door from the background onto its own layer, I duplicated it and mirrored it vertically. Using a mask, I used a big soft airbrush to erase some of the parts I don't need to be reflected. I want a soft transition in the reflections. Then I just lowered the opacity of the layer and voila! And I did the same with the feet of the characters. To blur out the background, I made a duplicate of the layer and then blurred it with Gaussian Blur. I believe it was around 15 pixels, maybe more. Then I masked it and used a soft airbrush to lightly erase some of the areas in the background that I wanted to be sharper. Then as an extra little details, I wanted to include the Demogorgon. Demogorgon? De hmm. I wanted to include the demon thing to the reflection as well. <laughs> His presence is simply just there to remind you that even though this is a rather peaceful setting, the horrors of the upside down is still very present. Then at the end I added some extra little areas of brightness on Nancy and Barb along with some backlight and rim light. To make up for the blank space where the logo was supposed to go, I put it a few ceiling lamps instead. And this is the final piece, my contribution to the celebration of Stranger Things for Netflix. And remember, if you're in the area of Copenhagen, you can come and say hi, hang out with me, watch loads of Stranger Things fan art at the exhibit on August 22nd. 
If you're one of the first 10 to show up, you'll get a limited signed print of this artwork. I'm never going to reprint it, and it's actually thanks to Netflix sponsorship that this is even possible for me to offer to you. Hope to see you there, and thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, subscribe for more art content from this weird day. <laughs> and if you want to be notified of my uploads, click the little ding dong as well. So, until next time, take care guys. <laughs>